Good morning, it's Josh here. I'm racing to profit. Um, coffee number two. Uh, well, it's ten to nine as I record this. Um, obviously, you won't be watching it at this time. Um, hope you had a good weekend. I thought I would attempt a uh, review video, which I'll try and, try and keep brief. Um, just looking back at Chepstow with a few thoughts and ideas that maybe we can um, take forward or ponder or think about. Um, obviously, it was kind of the Paul Nichols show. Uh, he seems to have some quality in his ranks again, doesn't he? Um, I suppose one of the things to take or that I kind of watched and absorbed as the meeting was ongoing was just how well they jumped. Um, I know some of them dictated, uh, and that's another point to take away, I suppose, when you watch some of these races at Chepstow, especially decent ground, especially the chases, um, was another reminder of how important or how useful it can be to either lead or race prominently uh, in a chase and how kind of that increases uh, your chance of success or of certainly running a big race um, and you'll you know if you go back through and watch some of the races that would be evidently clear um, it seemed plenty was kind of slowly run and those near the front are often in the best position um, but on decent ground just how difficult it can be uh, to come from further back also so yeah the schooling of the Nichols horses he obviously has Harry Cobden at home Bryony Frost I think Harry Skelton's been in to do a bit he's got Will Biddick who does quite a bit of his kind of pre uh, training and pre-schooling uh, and kind of prepares some of the younger horses um, Time White and McFabulous obviously look like decent animals so it would be interesting to track uh, their progress and see how they do. Um, Harry Cobden had a great weekend. I'll jump over to some jockey stats in a moment, uh, which I thought maybe of some mild interest. Um, the Vets Chase was superb. Uh, great entertainment. Um, I nearly was made to regret bottling, uh, which is probably the correct word, at Cross Park at what was a silly 25s. Um, Dancing Shadows ran a cracker. Easy lead from the front. Connections will be hoping that if he gets a, such a kind of easy lead on the front again, um, he may be, may be able to do something in a vet's chase somewhere. Uh, certainly the track that might be a bit tighter, um, not so galloping. He might be able to get a bit further away. Um, so hopefully for connections, he may have something in him in the vet series. I think the right horses came to the fore here. Cross Park bounced back after a kind of uh, mediocre last three runs from 26 October. He clearly had the odd issue, but the ground was totally against him, uh, which is one of the reasons why we could have expected kind of a bounce back performance like present man. He had winning form uh, after an extended break over fences. That's obviously can be even more important at this time of year or give you more confidence that a horse will be ready when you combine that with trainer form the Caroline Bailey team are going well obviously Paul Nichols are going well at a kind of silly 50% plus strike rate aren't they um, most of them running into the money at uh, present man seemed to come back to near his best for his age anyway um, but I I wonder what they'll do with Cross Park 10 he's obviously going to be 11 into next year but on decent ground, he ran there as if he's got an OK race in him. Um, I think he probably is better going left-handed. I was thinking whether or not they would maybe think about something like the um, Edinburgh National up at Musselburgh because the ground can be OK there. Um, sorry, I'm thinking about their other horse, Boldmere, there. Uh, he is fine <laughs> going right-handed, I think. Or is he not? I'm not quite sure. Actually, now all of his chase form... Sorry, he is left-handed, and the stable mate Boldmere, who I'll get onto a bit later, um, is also looks best going left-handed. So maybe they are going to keep him that way. But he ran there as if he's got a race. Um, whether or not he has something on his next couple of starts, that was off one four two, same mark as when kind of four lengths um, in the Scottish National. Maybe he's probably not that good anymore. April nineteen, uh, but I. Uh, connections will be happy there and I think he should be going well in some kind of staying chase or they're going to keep to the veterans um, races and he could easily pick up them but I think he does want further than three miles and he doesn't want it really testing um, but I think he's one uh, in terms of vets race I know he's 10 he's always going to be open to attack from younger legs if he goes back into non-vets races but he's got ability and that was you know he put in a 146 there so um 
you know, decent compared to some of his RPRs from when he was in real good form back in uh, 2019. Um, and obviously that's above the mark he ran off, so it gives some hope uh, that there could be something more to come um, from this mark, possibly. So, you know, he's one I'll be interested in or keep an eye on um, because he, yeah, if another stride, he'd have won that race. Uh, and I think he might have something OK in him uh, on in kind of a staying chases, but um, obviously have to take that race by race and weigh up the opposition and everything else. I think Joe Farrell ran okay. He's 11, but it all seemed to happen a bit too quick over this trip on that ground, and he clouted quite a few fences. Um, obviously didn't run as well as he did in this last year when it was much softer ground, uh, but he's lightly raced for his age, and I'd be disappointed or surprised if the Curtis team couldn't find something for him. Maybe he's better fresh, uh, who knows, but decent ground and other vets, uh, you know, there's there's the vet series to aim for, um, so he might be worth keeping an eye on in these type of races. Uh, present man is now, his mark might be prohibitive back in kind of open non-vets company. I don't know what Paul's plans are. You'd think he's owned by the Badger Rails folk, isn't he? I think the people that sponsor the Badger Rails chase. Um, so maybe having won that before, that's where he's going to rock up next. Um, whether or not he can hold off the hordes of kind of more unexposed chases, we shall see. Again, he's decent record fresh. But for a vet's chase, I think, certainly the front two, three, Joe Farrow, I think this form may hold up. But time will tell on that front um a couple of things to use that race uh, to try and give you something useful for the future maybe other than just talking about horses um what did i want to say sorry i was just thinking it yeah right so jumping over to horse race base handicap chases 10 year old plus um which are the vets kind of series in the uk i just wanted to highlight age um and that importance of if you like playing in them uh, always trying to make a case for a 10 year old if you can um, obviously you can see 14 percent of them win against the runners of more interest maybe is this 50, well nearly 57 percent of races uh, in these vets chases which have 10 year old present um, 57 percent of them are won by a horse age 10 um, so given the kind of from the numbers uh, I suppose that is probably going to be oh no, it's less than actually half the total uh, runners. But I, I just think that's um, interesting and worth noting. Uh, and, you know, you can look through kind of how many chases they've run in and won. Um, and, you know, generally aiming for if the fewer races, the better. Um, and maybe sometimes when they've had breaks and things. But of course, if a 10, 11 year old is lightly raced, on the flip side of that, you've got the idea that they've clearly had issues and had problems. Um, but certainly kind of looking at 10 year olds and those who you think have achieved a high level of form and might get bounced back to it relatively recently, which is the case sort of with present man, certainly with Cross Park. Um, that's the kind of things you can think about, I suppose, on that front. Uh, it may be a good idea. What do I want to focus on next? Um, it may be, yeah, I'm going to jump over to Gigi's actually in the query tool. This is just jockeys in the last uh, two years, I think I've set it at all chases uh, with at least 25 kind of runners under their belt. I've sorted it by win percentage. Um, Ruby's obviously retired. Uh, Paul Townend still going at a 30% clip, 4% above market expectations. Not bad given he's stable jockey for Mullins. This isn't handicap chases, I'll add. Um, Ryan Mania. Manny, um, he rides a lot now for Sandy Thompson. Um, but look at those stats. All his all chase record. That's pretty solid. And he does tend to have them handy enough, so he might be one to keep an eye on or just note down, uh, especially in the north. Um, they are decent, decent stats, all chases. Um, so that's one jockey to kind of note. Harry Cobden's in terms of given the number he rides to maintain that kind of 22% win strike rate, 40% win and place, this boy can ride a chaser um, and is always worth attention, I think, in any race uh, over fences. Um, David Bass does pretty well in terms of win percentage. <clears throat> um, you've got the impact value down the right. Uh, I mean, Ryan Manny is riding 2.12 winners uh, more times than the kind of the average as a jockey group as a whole which is obviously one um, so 2.12 more times um, 
more more winners than the norm which is obviously uh, decent um, and would indicate he has some impact uh, in terms of um, the overall uh, jockey landscape uh, so that's always worth uh, keeping an eye on as well um, David Bass I mean you can go down here and note down those that are kind of in the 19-20% John Joe Jr is doing very well he's a very good jockey another 40% win and place um, for someone who's so inexperienced he seems to have got to grips with the chasing game uh, pretty well um, so yeah Ben Jones decent um, and he still claims, does he? I think Brendan Powell, uh, Josh Moore's not too shabby. Bryony Frost, maybe another reminder um, of that victory on Present Man of how good she is on a chase. She obviously she's a stable jockey for Neil King, and they banged in another 14 to 1 winner, I think, yesterday um, in a bump, was it, of Newton Abbott? Um, her record with Neil King is pretty decent, but as long as Paul doesn't need her in a race, uh, she's kind of rides all of Neil's. Um, so that's worth keeping an eye on. She's still always rarely has a chaser in a bad spot and just gets them jumping. Uh, although present man could jump around with a blindfold on, I think. Um, so, yeah, you've got different things there. We could look at that by uh, handicaps um, if I can just work out how to find that. Uh, yeah, so I could I can sort this and just look at um, uh, handicap. Uh, sorry, that's not what I want to do. I want to select handicaps. Um, and then uh, sort by jockey. So those of you uh, who have this bit of kit, um, what do I want to look at? Uh, yeah, so I can then sort that by jockey again. Uh, looking at these, are yeah, yeah, so handicap chases in the last two years. Um, and again, I can sort by win percentage, at least 25 rides. And again, you can see the stats there. Um, you can't just back all of Harry's blind, obviously. Um, but yeah, again, you can absorb those kind of stats and information there if i look at pace score and kind of go three to four um that is looking at those who race prominently or lead uh and just you know absorb maybe i'm going to <laughs> some of those stats in front um you can see generally actually it's best as i've told before 67 percent of all handicap chases are won by horses who race who either lead or race prominently um that's always a stat worth absorbing and trying to see if you can make a case for a horse uh, a chaser that races prominently or will lead um, so using pace maps, whether it's those in GDs, which remember you get free on Mondays and Sundays if you're a free registered user. Um, I know at the races has pace maps, I think, but if you do not consider pace and race position in handicap chase punting, you should be. It's the one thing um, which will improve all of our uh, betting. And you can see the stats there. This is just the last two years. These jockeys in handicap chases, when they've led or raced prominently, um, you obviously have to try and predict and use pace maps to get that. But you can pause this video, obviously note down uh, those stats and jockeys and different things in front of you. Um, but clearly, uh, some of these in these higher echelons are kind of 25% win strike rate or plus kind of Brendan Powell upwards, maybe um, are worth absorbing in terms of their ability when racing promptly on chases. Obviously, your record as a jockey is very much linked to who you ride for um, and the form of the yard you've been riding for if we take Sean Byrne for example because Peter Byrne is dad he's ridden a lot for him in the last year a bit I think two from 70 in the last year because their yard you know hit the skids um but Sean Bowen uh, is obviously a very good chase jockey as well as an aside but yes you can see the stats there and some of the profit to one pound level stakes etc so that's hopefully something of use on this review video uh, from that front I'm um, ticking around to 15 minutes I don't want to drag on uh, much longer but it's probably going to end up being 20 max isn't it as is the way um, what do I want to say as I jump over to Saturday's racing um, this race, Native River again, you know, secret investor, decent horse, um, 153 animal. Uh, I suppose something to note from this for analysis moving forward is that Native River second, a 161 on RPRs, uh, three for nine in his career. Um, how old is he? Uh, eight year old. Still an idea there was more to come from this, Mark. Um, obviously, early season, some of them needed it, um, but that was a career best. So he was coming into this, his first run after a career best effort. Um, and looking at those big RPRs 
uh, compared to their actual mark in chases especially especially those that can race promptly as well is also another thing to consider um, and that those ones are worth noting uh, as clearly being thrown in and could cause some damage um, he's going to be tricky to place now so what they do with him I don't know but following seven length easy winners um, isn't necessarily going to be the quick way to riches but um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him I think the runs of pot de man and some cast are, are okay I kind of view them as summer chasers really maybe that's being a bit harsh but these are possibly up there as career best. Uh, Sam Chaos's mark now is getting his highest winning handicap chase mark is 138, I think. Whether or not he gets dropped a couple of pounds for this. He ran there as if he's got a chase in him. Uh, they're not going to bump into a 153 secret investor every time they run. And that was okay from Pot the Man. I think these two have very much just found their level. Um, they're obviously fit in form. Decent ground isn't a problem. Their profiles may be worth a closer look at. Uh, if you want and see if you can note their ideal conditions um, but they'll, they'll find easier race than this Bolmere is the one I want to take for the winter season and these chases to come his jumping could tidy up a little bit he ran much better here than he did on his return last season where I'm not sure he liked well I'm not quite sure he just jumped left and made mistakes all the way but then did okay back going right handed at Leicester um, he then put in two big performances that new tide he was going to hack up but fell at the last. That was a one five one. They still gave him so against his mark, and you might get dropped a couple of pounds after this return. He ran there as if he needed it. Went well for quite a long way. It may have happened a shade too quick, but I think he wants decent ground, or certainly no worse than soft. Um, I think he's he should have if his jumping's holds up. It should get better. He's only had five chases. Um, I would like to think he's got something decent in him. I don't know, given how well he won that race at Doncaster, whether they'll pencil in the Skybet chase. Might be an idea. Um, that's kind of second half of the season, early in the new year, is it, off the top of my head? Um, you've got the Warwick chase, classic chase. Will he stay three and a half miles? That's a question. Unexposed over a proper staying trip. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't say with confidence he wouldn't. Um, but I think they've got a nice horse on their hands there. Possibly the next cross park for the team. Um, so Bolmere is one I want to keep on side because I'm convinced he's got something okay in him this season. Maybe I'll be hurling myself off another cliff. We shall see. Um, but I think, uh, finally, I'll finish up with the silver trophy. Um, we had a winner, 40% rule, 40p rule for, I think, when I look back, not 20p. So 8 to 1 down to whatever that is, 4.8 uh, to 1. If you've got 8, lovely horse, going to make a hell of a chase. You can watch the replay, I suppose. Flash the Steel came from further back. He is going to be hard to place. Aged 8, 138, that is a career high. This race in the past has been one to follow i'm not quite sure if it is here so psycho ran actually maybe the ground had dried out too much but he did run also as if he would come on for the run um kind of blowing up uh, a bit kind of late up the straight so he's one to keep an eye on uh flink for the hobbs team ran much better than what i thought he's unexposed six push the tempo came back off a long long break on his start before that was promising um remember this was very decent ground some of these will be better when it's a bit softer i think that's the case for hobbs horse definitely the case for Sir psycho who definitely has wins in him in handicaps of 146 i think um and he might even progress further through the season but he handles heavy ground haydock mud which is always worth noting t clipper i should think given how he won this they'll put him into another hurdle um, and then possibly switch to fences hopefully he stays sound um, you can look at the size and the scope of him he looks like he could be a lovely horse for the team um, and is one to keep on side certainly when he goes chasing and hopefully he takes to that game he looks like he's built for it flash of steel probably will pick up something whether or not the ground goes against him and he'll get something in the spring whether or not they want to get his mark down a few pounds maybe they'll pick something up at air scottish national meeting but that's you know that's a long way away um that was a decent run they keep holding him up riding him cold he needs a strong pace uh two and three two and a half miles is ideal for him he'd have probably liked him to go a bit quicker but t clipper was well on top come the line and he took a while to pull up as they went round the bend um which is always a good sign uh, there's nothing else as yet i want to take from that this meeting was obviously ruined a bit by the ground drying out 
Um, the team would have liked more rain, but you know, lots of horses have been kept and ensured they weren't kind of damaged or injured on that ground. So we'll see how some of this form works out. There were obviously some very good performances, um, some jockeys to note, trainers to note, the odd horse. Hopefully I've said something of interest as I tick around to 20 minutes, which is going to be more than long enough for this video. Uh, and then with that said, let me know what you think, uh, what other things I could be touching on. Um, but until the next time, this is Josh saying thanks for watching and